Pollens have always been very interesting to me. If you want to look at some pollens, a very nice source are the nutritional augmented pollen grains that you can buy in a hill store. This particular collection is from France. The way they collect these is that they put a little screen in front of a beehive. As the bees go through the screen, the little collection of pollen that they have in their hind leg trap is knocked off of their leg and is collected in a tray near the front of the hive. These individual little beads each represent what one bee has collected. This is a, another collection. This is from just outside of Florence, Oregon. This is another collection. This is out of South America, Paraguay. Plants are very similar in all of these environments, but there are unique plants. And there are interesting forms of pollen that are found in each of these. Some of the keys to the identification of pollen take a particular set of characteristics and you have to identify those characteristics before you go on to the next step. Although that's very useful, I've always found that when I'm looking at a pollen grain, if I see some unique characteristic, I'd like to use that as my primary category in searching out the identity of the particle. On Microlab Gallery, I've tried to begin to do that. I have the pollens listed by their general morphology, which is where all of these texts begin. But I also have another way of indexing the pollen grain based on their major characteristic. Whether they have little spikes on them, whether they are multiple grains of pollen, whether they have a particular structure that stands out that would help us rapidly identify that pollen grain. This is a great reference, How to Know Pollens and Spores by Ronald Cap. This is an excellent book, lots of nice photographs and descriptions, very useful, very informative. One of the classics in pollen analysis is Fagrian Iverson's textbook of pollen analysis. An excellent reference text. Another very useful text is this one by Erdman, Pollen Morphology in Plant Taxonomy. Another one that I found rather useful is Kemp's, Kemp's book, pardon me, Kemp's book on pollen morphology. This book is again full of pictures, descriptions, definitions of the different structures you find on a pollen grain, which allow you to describe in detail features that a particular pollen grain might have. Very useful information. Now aside from just studying pollens, what can we learn from these pollen grains? One of the things we can learn is, for instance, where honey came from. Now, when we walk into a store, we see descriptions of clover honey, of wildflower honey, of sage honey, all kinds of honeys. These honeys contain the pollens of the plants that the bees actually went to. So you can actually take a sample of the honey and look at the pollen grains that are there and see whether or not that actually is clover honey or wildflower honey. We'll talk about that a little bit and we'll go into how we prepare those samples. Those samples require a little more work than these pollen grains. These pollen grains we can simply dissolve in a little alcohol 
spread out on a microscope slide and mount for analysis. We'll look at a couple of these different ways of preparing the pollen grains. We'll talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages, but we'll do that in the next episode. Hope you enjoy looking at your pollen grains.